Hi, I'm Babs Hogan, and normally you would see me as the healthy cheese lady. Guess what? Although we've done over 120 videos talking about cheese, I have a guest today that actually will bring up a topic that sur far sur uh, surpasses cheese, and his name is Dr. Chris Palmer, and as you can see on the screen, uh, he has amazing credentials. I don't want to just stop for a moment here. I want to just say something personally. Dr. Chris Palmer inspires me. He inspires me more than I would have ever known. I read his video, his articles. I watch his videos. I love to watch his presentations on YouTube. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, that's, I'm, I, I'm honored and very appreciative. Great. Okay, so let's get right to it. Uh, Dr. Palmer has just launched a fundraising campaign to raise $350,000 for uh, control, it's actually the first randomized control study that looks at the keto ketogenic diet used in psychiatry. So let's let's hear about that. So yeah, they, we are really excited to um, try to do this study. We have looked for research funding from conventional sources, and conventional sources have not come forward. Unfortunately, they haven't uh, offered the funding that we need to do this study. And, you know, I think there are a couple of reasons for that. One is some people are really just skeptical about a diet to treat a really serious, disabling, crippling mental disorder. That sounds like quackery. That sounds silly. There's no way a diet can do that. But the second one is that even for people who really understand the science of the ketogenic diet and the science of schizophrenia, and they can see that this is like a perfect match of a therapeutic intervention to address the scientifically known abnormalities in the brains of some of these people. They think you can't get anybody to do a ketogenic diet, let alone somebody with a chronic mental illness. Doing a diet is difficult for just about everyone. And so people with chronic mental illnesses, they're not gonna be able to do a diet. So we're having trouble getting funding because people are skeptical. Mm. That's an interesting take and, I, and I've seen and heard uh, you talk about that before and it's really, it, it is a skeptical situation, but it's funny that in, in reality, the ketogenic diet has been one of man's first, not diets, but dietary approaches, I guess. Just because it doesn't have a prescription on it, uh, people go, well, you know, it can't be effective, right? Yeah, no, exactly. So, you know, one of the reasons I'm so excited about doing this research is because even though the ketogenic diet is kind of a trendy weight loss uh, method right now, and some people think of it as a fad diet and nothing more than that, it turns out that the ketogenic diet was actually developed about 100 years ago by a physician, uh -huh. specifically to treat a brain disorder called epilepsy. Mm. And lo and behold, the ketogenic diet can actually stop seizures, even when medications and mm -hmm. surgery fail to stop seizures. And so this, is an, this has been studied for 100 years. We have an abundant evidence base. There's a Cochrane review for those of you who know medical literature, and this is kind of like the gold standard in medical literature. And Basically, it all comes together to say that the ketogenic diet is an evidence-based treatment for epilepsy when all else fails. Mm. And it turns out that we use epilepsy treatments in psychiatry all the time. Mm. Common names that you've probably heard of are things like Depakote, Neurontin, or Gabapentin, Topamax, Valium, Clonopin, Ativan, Xanax, all of these are actually anti-epileptic treatments. Huh. But we use them in psychiatry all the time. And lo and behold, they actually work for some people, but they don't work for everybody. And there are so many people who are tormented by their mental illness. They've tried medication after medication. They've tried psychotherapy, Many of them have tried electroconvulsive therapy or shock therapy. They've done everything they possibly can to fight their disorder and nothing is working. Mm. 
And in the epilepsy world, when we see patients like that, guess what? The ketogenic diet can stop some of their seizures. Wow. Doesn't work for everybody, but it works for a significant number of them. And so we have reason to believe, just based on that, that the ketogenic diet might actually be an effective treatment for serious, chronic, treatment-resistant mental disorders. I noticed on your website, it said, this is a quote, the ketogenic diet has profound effects on brain metabolism. Would you go into that, please? Yeah, no, so this is a really exciting area of research. And, you know, for decades, we've actually known that people with chronic mental disorders have abnormalities in brain metabolism. Mm -hmm. And those abnormalities might actually explain some of their symptoms and explain why their brains aren't working quite right. Mm. Um, and it turns out because the ketogenic diet has been around for a hundred years and scientists have been studying it for decades as well, turns out we know with certainty the ketogenic diet profoundly affects brain metabolism and it corrects a lot of metabolic abnormalities in the brain. Um, and so in many ways, it's really kind of a match made in heaven that people with mental disorders have by and large been found to have metabolic problems in their brains. And this is a metabolic intervention for the brain. Um, and we know that it works in a lot of people for, with a lot of different conditions. And so in many ways, it's extraordinarily so exciting from a scientific standpoint. Yes to see, will it actually work? And will it actually change brain metabolism in the ways that we expect it will and hope that it will? Very nice. I can tell you're pretty excited about this. And I know that your research team is also excited about it. So let me just tell the audience where we are at this point. Uh, the goal is $350,000. And so far there have been 65 donations. And the total is 12,486. So we're running against the clock. So when do you think your research study will actually start? It's a great question. And I think a, the, the biggest variable is when we get enough funding. Mm -hmm. So the, the, that funding, just so people know, um, that funding by and large is not going to be supporting my salary. I am not making a penny off of any of this. This is a labor of love for me. Yeah. But in order to do research, we need a re one or two research assistants who are going to do all of the research work. We also need to consult with um, a statistician and other people. Mm -hmm. I'm collaborating with several researchers at McLean Hospital. One of them, his name is Dr. Dost Unger. And he is a world-renowned expert in brain metabolism and brain metabolism abnormalities in people with chronic mental disorders. And I will tell you, he's beyond excited to get this study going. Right. Maybe I should interview him too. He has brain scans oh, that these metabolic abnormalities. And so what we're really planning to do with this $350,000 is we're going to take a group of people with chronic treatment resistant mental illness. We're going to scan their brain ahead of time and see what types of metabolic abnormalities they do have right now. And then we're going to put them on this ketogenic diet. And there is no question, this is a difficult diet for people to do. Mm -hmm. And for people with chronic mental illness, they often have symptoms that will make it very difficult for them to do it on their own. Mm. They have problems with motivation. They have problems with cognition. Some of them can't even get themselves to go grocery shopping on their own. Yeah. So we are going to spoon feed these people, quite literally. We are going to prepare meals. We're gonna give them the meals. We're gonna do what it takes to get them this treatment. And that's where a lot of this money is going to go. And then we're going to follow them for at least eight weeks. If we can get enough funding to do 12 weeks, we probably will. But we're going to do it for at least eight weeks. 
And we're going to see, does this diet improve their symptoms? Um, and then we're going to do another brain scan at the end of this trial to see, did the diet objectively change their brain scans and the metabolism in their brain? We're also going to be doing uh, microbiome assessments because a lot of people are really interested in that area. There's a lot of evidence emerging that the microbiome might play a role in mental disorders. And interestingly, there are a few landmark papers that have been published in the last two years showing that the ketogenic diet profoundly changes the gut microbiome in positive beneficial ways. And so that might, so, so I think one of the things we're really excited about in doing this study is that not, not only are we gonna see, is this an effective intervention for real people who are suffering today, but we're also going to try to tease out some of these mechanisms of action. What is the diet doing to their brain, to their gut microbiome, to markers of inflammation, and to, to their blood glucose and insulin levels? What is this diet doing? And how can we better understand why this is working and how this is working? Okay, so you mentioned the, uh, the, the two different groups, ketogenic and then, of course, the control group. So what, what is the diet of the control group? The control group diet is probably going to be the American Heart Association diet, um, which is, in general, a diet that is recommended to be low in fat and certainly saturated fat, yeah. high in whole grains, yeah. Um, yeah. fruits and vegetables, um, and it is, unfortunately, it is my belief that that diet will not help people with chronic mental illness. All those grains, the, the lack of healthy fats, um, my sense is it probably will not help them, but we're going to find out. And we're going to do brain scans on them as well, and microbiome assessments on them as well. So that we're, not only are we going to have the clinical evidence of are the symptoms getting better, but we're going to have objective biological markers that are going to tell us what did the different diets do to these people's bodies and brains. And can that help us understand how a dietary intervention might actually be working? To, to bring about true relief. Uh, well, I know that's a hot button for you. I, I don't want to get you stirred up because I've been down that road before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what I'm talking be. about, audience, is that you should watch Dr. Palmer's three-minute little uh, speech about the, the diet and, and how the committee needs to really pay attention to new science. And it's actually very inspiring. I, I really, I've watched that like five times. Thank you. Yeah. So let's see here. So just generally, what gives you the most hope that the ketogenic diet will actually make uh, people, improve people's lives in terms of their mental health status? What, what are you really hoping to find out? So I think that, you know, the thing that I'm really hoping to find out is I'm hoping to prove that this diet really works. Mm -hmm. I already feel like I know it does. And the reason, so, so that gets to the other part of the question was what gives me hope about this treatment at all? Yeah. And, and I think there are two things that give me hope about this treatment. One is that I've used it in dozens of patients now and I have seen firsthand mm -hmm. it work. Mm -hmm. And these are patients that I have known, some of them for two or more decades. So I know these patients well. I've put them on medication after medication. I have seen those medicines fail to work for them. I have prescribed electroconvulsive therapy to some of them, and that hasn't changed their life. That hasn't improved their lives. Mm -hmm. But I've seen this diet have profoundly positive effects on some of them, not all of them. I don't want to you know, overstate it. I wish I had the treatment that would work for everyone in the world. No treatment is going to work for everyone in the world, unfortunately. But so that's kind of hope number one is that I've seen it really work with patients that I know well. Um, 
But the other thing that gives me tremendous hope is that I have been hearing from clinicians who are using this treatment as well, and patients from around the world, literally as far away as Australia. I've heard from people all over that they have tried this diet. Oftentimes because of the research I've done and because of the articles that I've already published, they figured, well, I'm just gonna try it on my own. Mm -hmm. And they're coming to me saying, it worked. <laughs> you were right, it worked. Amazing. Or they started it before I even came onto the scene. And, and they said, I've been doing this for five years on my own and it works. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so that kind of is reassuring to me that it's not just me seeing this fact. Yeah. But yeah. then the third part of the hope for me is all of the science. There's a tremendous amount of science on the ketogenic diet and on people's brains who have mental disorders. And the science is a match made in heaven. This treatment is a match made in heaven for the deficits and the abnormalities that we have found mm -hmm. in these people's brains. And it just makes sense mm -hmm. to do this study and find out definitively once and for all, is this an effective evidence-based treatment? So really we need to develop an evidence base. And then the thing that I'm most hopeful about is that this treatment might be offered to the millions of other people who desperately need it. Because I'm just one person. I can't treat millions of people. <laughs> so, so I'm hoping to get other clinicians, other hospitals, other clinics to start offering this. Treatment. Yes. Well, I want to be part of your promotional team. I believe in what you're doing. I've done a lot of the, I've done a lot of reading, uh, kind of since I heard uh, about your, your uh, quest back in August when I got a, an email from you and you told me about the, the, what you're trying to do and your goal. And I started diving into the research, which is my favorite. I love to go in there and dig around and see what's new, what's exciting. And beyond the, the mental health patient, can we talk a little bit about uh, how the keto diet might actually help just regular people who are just suffering from, you know, a lot of stress, a lot of depression since the pandemic hit. A lot of people are losing their homes or losing their jobs. The stress is actually pretty high, wouldn't you say? Yeah, um, unfortunately. And I've been, you know, as a psychiatrist and uh, I, I'm the director of a continuing education department. So I do education on psychiatric mental health issues. And so we've cert I've certainly been working in that space as well. And um, it's frightening. There, were, there was a study that just came out of the CDC in the last month, um, a survey of Americans. And just about 50%, five zero percent of Americans right now are reporting extremely high levels of anxiety or depression. Yep. And 11% of all Americans surveyed, so in their survey, 11% of all the people they surveyed seriously considered suicide in the last month. When they looked at the age group of people younger than 25 years old, 18 to 25, 25% of them had seriously considered suicide in the last month. 25? 25%, one in four. Oh. We have a problem, yes. a massive problem. Yeah. And it's not surprising why we have this problem. Everybody knows the year 2020 is the year from hell. And there's just, there's just nothing good about this year at all. It just, and it just keeps coming. Like no matter what happens, it just keeps coming. Bad stuff is happening. It's not just the virus. It's the economic fallout of the virus. It's all the social distancing. It's losing all of our rituals. It's, um, you know, all of it. Um, and people can only take so much. And I think some people have just been pushed to their limit. Yes. Um, and so it's understandable, but we have to come together as a country and help each other through this. Okay. We must, nothing is permanent. 
And when it comes to mental health in particular, nothing is permanent. People are going through a temporary, horrible setback in their life. Yeah. They're having trouble coping. They're having trouble getting by. We can help them. We can help them get through this and they will see a better day next year. Um, but we have to get them through it. And mm -hmm. there's no doubt that, a diet, that, that dietary interventions can be effective. And one common coping mechanism for all of that chaos is actually overeating, over drinking, overusing recreational drugs, marijuana, other things. Yeah. And again, it's, I get it. It's understandable why people are doing that. They're overwhelmed. They don't know what else to do. They're having trouble coping. A lot of them are thinking about ending their lives. Um, but dietary interventions can change your metabolism and can change the way your brain functions. Mm -hmm. And that can actually make your brain more resilient. And that doesn't mean that the problems are going to go away. They're not going to go away. We're still going to have a pandemic. Yeah. We're still going to have economic problems. But if your brain is more resilient, if you feel stronger, if you feel mm -hmm. more adaptable, if yeah. you're able to think more clearly, if you're able to get a good night's sleep every night, yeah. that is going to mean the world in terms of your ability to deal with whatever you have to deal with and move on mm -hmm. and, and create a better life or just survive in the meantime. Okay, Dr. Palmer, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about more topics along the way and, and we've agreed to do a series, which I think is extremely important. So I wanna just kind of close uh, up with the, the GoFundMe campaign. I'm gonna, oh, I'm sorry, I will make sure at the end of this video, we'll have the link for the GoFundMe uh, campaign. You can go to that website and you can make the donations. And I'll, again, it's, you know, we've only gotten $12,486 and the, the goal is 350,000. So there's a long way to go. So I want to encourage everyone who's watching this to donate because everybody that we, everybody that we know has someone in their family or a friend or maybe a neighbor that's suffering from serious mental health in illnesses. And you can make a difference by supporting this particular study. And I, I want to emphasize that it could change people's lives, not just you know, next year, not just next month, maybe this week or even tomorrow. It could start changing, the, as you mentioned, the brain uh, metabolism. It's going to make a lot of difference in people's lives. This is very important. I'm dedicated to be uh, a big part of your promotional team. Um, and I want to help you as much as I can because I think and I really believe that you are going to make people's lives different and, it, different. and it, it could be millions of people, millions. It's a massive, important, it's a massively important project. Thank you. It is a massively important project. And for those people who don't know, you, you know, so many people who have a mental illness, or know somebody with a mental illness are suffering alone in silence mm. because there is so much shame and stigma mm. around having a mental illness, especially a chronic mental illness. Right. But in case you didn't know, mental illnesses are now the number one cause of disability on planet earth. It's depression, isn't it? D depression being the number one uh -huh. medical diagnosis. Yeah. More than cancer, Alzheimer's disease, heart attacks, strokes, yeah. depression is what disables the most people on this planet today. We need better solutions. I don't and know why people aren't talking more about that. That really is, it, I mean, no, I'm a health professional and I haven't been talking about it, but I promise you I am. So, so thank you for the inspiration, Dr. Palmer. Thank you. So it, it there are just unimaginable numbers of people mm -hmm. who are desperate for a better life yeah. and for a solution. And guess what? They will do a diet. If a diet will help them, they will do it and yeah. they will do their best. Yes. And you can help make this 
a reality for them by helping fund this stuff. Sounds fantastic. I look forward to interview number two. And until then, I'll close and thank you very much. Thank you, Babs. Take care.